Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. I hope everyone is having a good holiday season as we are here to recap another win by our Philadelphia Eagles as they stay in the playoff race, beating the New York football Giants 34-10 to and forcing out their starting quarterback. But Andrew, how are you doing today, first and foremost? It was a good holiday. I hope everyone else had a good holiday. And uh, obviously, an Eagles win makes it better and everything. So I'm doing uh, fairly well, fairly well so far here uh, late this evening. But uh, what about you? Doing well, doing well. It's always good when the Eagles win. And when I hopped on this podcast, Team USA was up 3 to nothing as well. So two things going together. Those are great things. Um, so, uh, but first and foremost, as I ask you in this podcast, what were your key takeaways from this game that you think are going to be crucial for this team to maintain going forward as we obviously play the Washington football team and then we play the Dallas Cowboys in the final two weeks of the season to try to get to the ultimate goal of the playoffs as we're now eight and seven finally above 500 so well yeah obviously it's a big win there um now you control your own destiny you're locked in a playoff spot uh, as long as you keep on winning um, I'd say that's that's a big spot here. I thought one key um, is basically the recipe we've had this this whole season is the run game. Um, we won this game through the ground for the most part. Um, 130 for, yards, I yeah, think it was again. Yeah, 130 yards, to 199 passing yards. So I know the stats seemed like it, but the, the run game really opened up your passing game in the second half. So I think that was a major uh, takeaway there. I will say Hertz doesn't look 100%. I did worry me a little bit, and I think you saw it in the final stats. He limped off that with only two carries for seven yards. Uh, I think we used to Hurts get a lot more than two carries and a lot more than seven yards. So I think they did shy away from the quarterback run a lot today. And the only thing I could take away from that is just Jalen's health. So I think that's something to, to take note of as the season goes forward. I think that's something that would be big if you can lock up here in – this next week against Washington and lock up a playoff spot. Obviously, you'd still play for seeding on uh, the final week of the year, but the Cowboys already clinched the division with with their game tonight. And then the uh, Eagles have an opportunity to clinch a playoff spot next week if everything goes right. So we'll see the way it kind of shakes up here in the next week. But I, I did think uh, Hurts a little, looked a little banged up throughout this game. So hopefully – and. Obviously, part of that's playing a Tuesday to Sunday game, so you're not used to that, and you're, you're playing on double short rest there because you uh, obviously lose the day with that Tuesday game. I'd say uh-huh. uh, another big takeaway is another slow start. I'd say, I mean, obviously, I love the second half dominance we've seen from this team in the last few weeks, but listen, we're, we're taking advantage of playing some bad teams. If you would have had this kind of start in a playoff game, you're probably down 17, 20 nothing. Uh, early on in that second quarter. So I think that's an adjustment we're going to have to make, especially come playoff time, is we need to get out the quicker starts is, is my biggest concern. But staying positive, um, the defense, what, what an adjustment we've seen from them the, the second half of the season, especially today. I mean, your two leading tacklers today, TJ Edwards and uh, Alex Singleton. So two guys that have – everyone keeps talking about the progression we've seen throughout the, the, the uh, year. And, again, they just continue to show it, show it today. So – a lot of uh, positive progression from the defense throughout the year. And I, I think that's one of my favorite takeaways. Mm-hmm. No, I agree with all that. I think you're spot on with Hurts because he did. I can't remember who he completed it to, but when he got tackled and got the throw off and completed that couple-yard pass, they said he limped off after that. So you could tell it seemed like he was battling um, through his lower body, uh, his ankle and everything still. Um, hopefully he didn't do anything else. But um, he still <clears throat> played a solid um, game overall. So, I mean, I think uh, what I would say from Jalen Hurts was he had a very good second half, just like the rest of the team, where the whole team, it's not like anybody did the greatest thing in the first half because, like you said, uh, we have to get better starts. Against the Jets, we got outscored 14-7 to but took advantage of playing a bad team and made it up in the next three quarters. Against Washington, we got shut out 10 nothing and took advantage of a bad team, like you said, made it up in the next three. And then in this game, nobody could score, and it was just 3-3 three, three after half, and then ended up 34-10. So, uh, like, you took advantage of a team that just couldn't get it going, forced out Jake Fromm, um, who isn't really a starting quarterback, but in his first NFL start, you were able to force him out. 
still made Mike Lennon look like Mike Lennon, which is why Jim yeah. Fromm was in the game in the first place. So um, both of those things put together, you did exactly what you were supposed to do on de- defense. So that's a key going forward because you're not playing a good team again next week. We're playing Washington, who also really sucked um, they're in their game this week. So um, I think this team, they, they got to have a better start, but obviously – Next week, you will get away just like we did the first round around with Washington of probably getting off to a slow start because it's Washington and it's not like they play the cleanest brand of football. But you have to get this going better um, before the playoffs come. Uh, Hopefully, obviously, also Jalen Hurts is able to get healthy and kind of have now with a regular week a little bit longer to recover here. So he's not kind of playing through where it looked like he was limping a bit. And that probably, like you said, the key factor was we had a Tuesday to Sunday. So that plays in big when you're playing through a being banged up, but I still think he played a good game. I think the key to this game was the running game, but also the key to this game was also two big plays that I took away from our wide receivers. One being the big guy you drafted to be a big play guy and Devonte Smith coming back on the one ball and the other being Quez Watkins making the uh, great catch down the field as well. So yeah. I think those are two things you love to see to be able to see your receivers. Because Hurts, those weren't the best throws. You could definitely make better deeper passes. But he at least put it where the receiver could catch it. Watkins adjusted, caught it. Devontae Smith adjusted, caught it, who had a good overall game. And then, of course, I have to point out as a key takeaway, on top of his great blocking, Lane Johnson, who I believe is a former tight end, uh, was able to catch a touchdown pass of his own. So uh, good for Lane Johnson to be able to get on the scoreboard himself and um, catch a touchdown pass. But let's go back uh, first and foremost to what I was saying about uh, the Eagles having a sloppy start. Of course, we had a fumble on a return. We had a play that ended up not being an interception, uh, fortunately, for the Eagles early in that game. Um, and then another fumble that Dallas Goddard, of course, ended up recovering. What do you think the uh, reason is? Because you brought it up that we have to fix it, but like, why? Like, I can't put my finger on it myself per se, but like, why we've been getting off to these bad starts in the last couple of weeks where I remember we played San Francisco. Um, fantastic. Or no, not San Francisco. Um, uh, the Saints fantastic to start the game and got off to like a 14, nothing start in that first quarter. But mine is that we haven't really had good success because we lost to the giants, of course, sucking the entire game to starting game. So what do you think is the big reason why that's the case? I think one, it's partially on uh, play calling. I think something I've noticed is our passing game relies on the run game, meaning once the run game opens up a little bit, it develops the passing game. And Sirianni likes to, what it seems like, is start the game passing. I mean, I think today we started six of our first eight play calls, I think, were passing. Um, and listen, I don't disagree with some of the play calls. I mean, we had, what, four or five drop passes to start the game today? So Yeah, we had a couple. Some- yeah, you could turn some Sanders of them had the first. two, Rigger had yeah. one, and then Goddard, Goddard had yeah. one, two. Yeah. So you, you could have turned some of those in the first down, and then your offense is moving anyway. Um, you could have, against Washington, you obviously had Goddard drop that first down ball, turns into an interception. So I think that's partially it, is you rely on the run game to kind of develop things where we like to start with passing, and until we get the run game going, we see the passing game open up. I think, too, our coaches are that good at adjusting at halftime. I honestly believe that. Is It seems like every halftime we're we're winning that second half, and that, that's partially on coach adjustments. So I think we're, we're just having a phenomenal job adjusting to the game. Um, but this is something – I mean, the Eagles have always been a slow team. This is one of the biggest knocks when Wentz was here was – how slow of a start this team would get out to and, and not being able to start fast. And it kind of just continues. I know something today was you kept losing field position. Um, you had the fumble to start on the kickoff, put you, put you back a few yards, and then the punt, Washington started with good field position. You had the defense hold, but then the Washington punt pinned you within the 15, 10-yard line. Same, And then you 
went three and out, lost field position again. So until you won that field position, he also started to struggle. So it kind of just seems like a week-to-week thing, and different things are factoring in. Um, Tuesday, obviously, you had, what, almost two weeks with no football, so you obviously started a little rusty. So it's kind of all just a lot of different things piling up, and it's fixable, and and I, I think they'll be fine and get the hang of it coming coming a very big game. I also wonder if Sirianni, just because he wants to get Hurts into the game, like if he would not do this in a playoff structure, like if he wouldn't start exactly. six of eight passing, where like it's just, just we're playing not the best teams where he figures you can make it up in the end. Now, granted, we also could have been up 6-3 at the end of the first half if we didn't have a bad snap and hold. That is the main reason why I think Jake Elliott <laughs> won for the goal because you saw when he got the snap um, and the whole it bobbled, had to get there, and it looked like the snap just got held correctly right as he was kicking it, yeah. uh, which is not what you want to have happen. So that's why I think he missed that. But for me, um, I'll shoot it over to you after this for our key contributor on the defensive side of the ball. But for me, I think it had to be Rodney McLeod because he had an interception himself. And then he also forced that interception that Alex Singleton had for the pick six. So um, I have to give it to, even though the tackles leader comes in a close second, I have to give it to Rodney McLeod, who just had a very good overall defensive game, doing what you want McLeod to do. Um, really covering well out there, forcing turnovers and getting a turnover of his own due to great pressure, um, which this was probably the best game I've seen Jonathan Gannon usual, utilize the blitz um, due to great pressure by the team. Absolutely. And I agree 100% with you. Uh, McLeod was huge. Um, like you said, the interception Singleton has doesn't happen if it's not from McLeod knocking that ball away. So he was all over the field. I'm not going to steal yours, but I do agree in the sense of um, him being a standout player. I'm going to go to someone who we've been waiting to have a, a, a big game. And because uh, he's on the defensive line, he doesn't get the tackles like Singleton and Edwards do as linebackers. But I thought um, Josh Sweat uh, stepped up big time today, had a big time sack, felt like he was rushing the quarterback all day, didn't really get much time uh, between Fromm and uh, Glennon. They really didn't have uh, – much time to really think about what they want to do. So I got to go with Sweat um, as a key contributor of mine because some of those interceptions also don't happen if it's not for the pass rush. So I really like what I saw from Sweat. He had a sack, a tackle for a loss. Again, only four total tackles, but those two tackles right there, the loss and the sack, come up big time uh, in the stat sheet. And uh, especially after getting that contract in the offseason, people have been frustrated with him a little bit up and down, but I thought he came out here today and really did his job. Yeah. And then I also thought um, you brought him up um, earlier. I forget if it was as we started the podcast or right before, but TJ Edwards had a heck of a game, too. Six tackles, 10 assists, um, according to score. And then the tackle leader, Singleton, who, again, obviously you would like him to be more of a rotational linebacker and draft somebody still in the draft. I agree with everybody that says that, but he's still doing his things to the ability of what he's able to do. And you got to applaud him for that being the tackles leader. So, um, and getting the interception because some people like Darius Slay dropped the pick. Love how Darius Slay is playing this year, but got to take a shot at him for that. Uh, some people would have dropped that ball. So, you know, <laughs> uh, he still made the catch uh, after Rodney McLeod made a good uh, defensive play where I don't know what the hell Darius Slay was doing. Uh, where jo- I think I think it was Jonathan. Jonathan Vilma was a color commentator, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, where well, Jonathan Vilma was beside himself, even though I don't think Jonathan Vilma is the best color commentator, to be honest. Uh, but, it, was, it was rough. Uh, I don't know what was, I don't know what was worse, was the broadcast of that first half. <laughs> huh? I don't know what was worse, the broadcast of the first half of football. No, I agree. Yeah, Vilma, Vilma's definitely better just doing shows on ESPN than he is as a color commentator in a football game. And even then, sometimes I don't agree with everything he's saying. But we talked about our key defensive contributors. Uh, so let's flip it over to the opposite end of the ball. I'll shoot it over. Since I started with the defense, I'll let you start with the offense. And uh, who is your key contributor that led to this win on offense? As we gave our keys on defense, yours being Josh Sweat. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Jesus, mine, of course, being Rodney McLeod as I had a frog in my throat. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be somebody you mentioned in, in your key takeaways. And I think you have to give the ball to, to Devontae Smith. 
Um, like you said, he had the toe touch, uh, touchdown in the end zone. Forget how long uh, a touchdown pass that was. But that was a huge spot in the game. I think it was kind of close at that point. So a huge touchdown there for Smith. Then he also came back and got the ball um, for that 46-yard pass, which, I mean, not to pick on Hurts a little bit, but if he hits Smith in stride, you won't be able to get a touchdown out of that. And that, that's the difference in hitting a guy in stride and making him come back for the ball. But there's a I great adjustment. It was a great adjustment from Smith to come back and get it, something we really haven't had as Eagles fans uh, these last few years. So I'm excited to finally get a guy like that and see him contribute there. I, did, I read a stat after today. He's 179 yards away from 1,000 yards, and uh, he'd be the first Eagle to get a thou- first wide receiver to get 1,000 yards since uh, 2014. So he's chasing that mark. But, uh, no, yeah, I got to give the ball to Devontae Smith here today. Yeah, well, since you took Devontae Smith, um, I feel like, for me, I have to take uh, – I thought he would have a better game if he did not go out because he did really good on seven rushes, 45 yards. I thought Miles Sanders was set to really Absolutely. have a great game in this game. But hopefully his hand injury is not too bad. We have Boston Scott step up. He had 41 himself. Howard did his thing um, as well. But – um. I think he's a guy you have to point out in this game because even in the limited carries he had, he still was able to get 45 yards. Unfortunately, he had to come out, so he still was not able to get his first touchdown when Boston Scott uh, ran in for that touchdown. But um, uh, he played a hell of a game before he had to come out. And then my secondary guy would be Boston Scott just because of how well he continues to play. Uh, That was a heck of a pickup. Um, obviously, to be able to get him off of the scrap heap that Howie was able and Howie was able to pick him up where, like we always say, Howie tends to be better at picking people up from nowhere land sometimes than he tends to be at drafting. But, yeah. but uh, even <laughs> that's a different story for a different time. Go ahead. Sorry to cut you off. Um, even Jordan Howard just throwing games as a whole. I mean, nine carries for 37 yards, so over four yards a carry. Even that's a phenomenal day. So. I mean, the whole game, but no, I agree. Sanders was there for going over 100 yards again, easy. Uh, if he's able to stay healthy, it's a shame to see him get banged up. He's been dealing with injuries all year um, from his ankle to his uh, I think it was his quadricep coming into the game, then he leaves with his hand wrapped. So it's uh, it's unfortunate to see because he's starting to play his best football, and it's crazy to hear he doesn't have a touchdown. When they said that at the yeah. beginning of the broadcast, that was just unbelievable to me. But, I mean, even with Sanders missing some time this year, I mean, he's still still 19th in the league in rushing, uh, over 700 yards. So he he would have broke a thousand this year if he was able to stay healthy. So he's averaging over five. He's averaging five and a half yards a carry. It's just unbelievable, and that's credit to the offensive line as well. But no, phenomenal day for the run game once again. Mm-hmm. And that's also the credit to the depth you have um, bringing in a guy. You got Howard mm-hmm. off of. Um, also kind of just off of the scrap heap this year where people weren't believing in him anymore. The Eagles, who obviously had him in their system, bring him back in. And then he starts doing well here again. Uh, you brought in Boston Scott, obviously, like I said in the past. He's one of your best contributing backs. And then you draft a game well in the late round. So you, having that depth really helps you because we already saw it step up when Sanders was out. But hopefully he's not out as he was before. But as we... Uh, head into our ending sector of our Eagles recap podcast here. I'm going to turn it over to you to say, what do you think of the overall performance, though, since you did talk about him gutting it out a little bit? It seemed like he was playing through injury of having the, I guess, perseverance would be the right adjective to use, the perseverance factor that Jalen Hurts seems to show to his game each week, where when he doesn't have a good start, the good quality of him that I've seen this far is he's one of those quarterbacks that doesn't let that, affect him at all where some young guys when they don't have a good start like baker for example it kind of goes all the way down at times and it's not a good thing you want to see when he has it he fights and he kind of fights back this guy is resilient it's unbelievable i mean you look at tuesday's game since we didn't get a chance to recap that he has that fumble and he bounces back after the coach yells at him and he comes out and just balls um today i mean yeah he like we said, he only threw a couple guys, but they were still caught. I thought he played phenomenal football, honestly. Um, people are going to nitpick him here and there, but when we talked about the Goddard drop, the Rager drop, the Sanders drop a couple, and we talked about five drops in the first five minutes of the game. He only had 12 incompletions. So you add those five right there, not even counting the rest of the game. You're looking at 22 for 29. 
He only bad at, plays you have at thirty fun. yards, probably about two thirty. So I mean, and maybe even another touchdown because a couple of those would have been first downs and you keep driving. So I'm honestly the stats. Sometimes stats are only numbers. Um, seventeen to twenty nine. I think that's more of just a number than what we actually saw from Hertz. Um, because I thought he went out and played pretty well. And again, those drops come back to haunt you. And I mean, even Watkins had had a big one across the middle. Uh, I think in the third, third or fourth, or That's true. early in the third quarter. Drop, yeah. So, um, I mean, again, you're looking at 12 incompletions, but really, I truly believe half of those were drops, and, and you could at least add half of those back. At least five of them were. I would definitely say the only bad plays that I really thought Hurts made today, because later in the game he then threw one out onto the side of the end zone, which he should have done on the play that fortunately ended up not being an interception. Mm-hmm. With that play that fortunately ended up not being an interception. And then the fumble. The fumble was not a great – but other than that, um, you got the fumble recovered, so you lived to tell about it. Those were not the best, but that speaks to the resilience and perseverance where that was all in the first half. He was able to battle it back, throw two touchdowns, and have a good overall game without being able to use his other side of the of the token, which is being able to run – with the best of them in the league back there running the run pass option because it looked like he was playing banged up. So he didn't have that side of the token as much. So we did more running and then Hertz actually passing, just missing a hundred or 200 yards by one yard, having 199. So he had a solid overall passing game and would have had 200 yards if one of those people, literally one of them that dropped it, caught the ball. So uh, that, I, that was a very solid overall passing game from him in back to back week. I remember last week after he didn't have the best start. I remember, though, uh, we were all talking about how he did have a good passing week to close out that game and really did have a solid passing week against Washington when I was at uh, my buddy's house watching that game to win 27-17. to So for back-to-back weeks after not having the squeakiest, cleanest start, he closes out great passing and would have even had better passing stats, which last week he had a couple drops too, so he would have had even better passing stats. But this week there was like five or six that he nice. really would have had better passing stats if those drops were not there, which for me is a closeout to this podcast is another key thing that we have to fix, not just slow starts, but key drops. You can't have key drops in the playoffs either because that's going to damn you a lot more in the postseason than it does in the regular season against a team like the Washington football team or the New York Giants. Even when you're playing, depending who they're playing in the final week, I don't know who's going to be playing with Dallas, that's going to hurt you more against them if they still have actual people playing and not their second and third string. So, like, you have to play better in that aspect, too. You can't have key drops if you're going to try to succeed and at least be have a good game, whether you go out in the first round or not, or try to win in the first playoff game. You're going to have to not have key drops as well as starting off slow is a key thing you got to fix. I agree with that 100%. But I think that about wraps us up, or as my good friend from Steel Flyers, Peerless, says, that's our full 42 or 24 um, and about with this one. But I'll turn it over to Andrew, as you can give uh, where people can find you. And if you had any closing thoughts on the birds as we head into obviously playing the Washington football team yet again next week as we try to beat them in their home born, as we, of course, beat them in the link last time. Hey, uh, you can find me at AJ underscore Santangelo. Final thought is at this time next week when we're doing the Eagles recap on January 2nd, we'll be talking about the Eagles clinching a playoff berth. Um, I believe the Dolphins will beat the Saints tomorrow night. Vikings will lose to the Packers next Sunday. And uh, we will be, well, we'll take care of business against Washington. So I uh, I think it's been a, a crazy year going from, what, 2-5 and five to 8-7 and seven now. Um and hopefully it continues to ride. And as long as we continue to win games through the run game and control the clock, I mean, NFC outside the Packers really looks wide open with now the Buccaneers having all their injuries. So playoffs, oh, no. Well, anything can happen. That is true. That is true. I like that prediction of uh, everything going right for us coming in the next week. Uh, you can find me at JJBoard26 on Twitter as well as writing hockey articles for Flyers Nitty Gritty and doing overall sports stuff. Uh, for Steel Flyers, as well as on this YouTube page. My closing thought will be more, <clears throat> let's try to have what we did, like we've been saying in this podcast, let's try to bring some of that second half into the first half. Uh, just bring a little bit of that extra jam earlier on into the game um, against Washington, 
we did beat them 27 to seven, but I don't want to get shut out in the first quarter again to then beat them. So let's next week have a little bit starter, a start with a little bit more spunk against this team and kind of flatten them early to do what you did, what you just said and be able to clinch the playoff spot rather than having to fight back after a bad first quarter. That's what I really want to see next week would be my closing thought. And we'll hopefully have time to maybe preview that game uh, for you guys before next week. But we hope you all have had a good holiday season and continue to have a good holiday season. Thanks for tuning in. Please continue to subscribe down below to keep showing love and support. We really appreciate you for it. Go Birds. Fly Eagles. Fly. Great win today. Let's keep it going against Washington next week. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe.